Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Janice Kisty, Jackson Township mm -hmm. Clerk. Welcome to the regularly scheduled Jackson Township Council meeting of March 23rd, 2021. The time is now 7.30 p.m. Begin with a roll call. Councilman Borelli. Here. Councilman Chisholm. Here. Councilman Sawicki. Here. Council Vice President Fleming. Here. Council President Kern. Here. And in for, in for our regular attorney, Gregory McGuckin, is attorney Pat Varga. And also present this evening is our mayor, Michael Rena, and business administrator, Terrence Wall. As clerk of this meeting, I publicly announce that in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been advertised in the manner prescribed by law. This statement shall be entered into the minutes of the meeting. Council President Kern would like to take a moment to, to speak. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Tonight we have two presentations. Uh, and the mayor has two proclamations, so I'd just like to say a few words before we get started. For the past two years, I've witnessed a number of new hires and promotions within the police department and at the beginning of, at the beginning of council meetings. And then, after they and their families have all left, I've said wonderful things about the men and women who make up our police department to a half-empty room and not just because of the governor's shutdowns. Well, tonight I get to speak before you leave. I wanna thank each and every member of our police department for all that you do to keep us safe, to help us in our worst hours. This council has stated over and over that our police department is second to none in the state of New Jersey. Our officers are dedicated to our community and care about the residents of our town. In just this past year, there have been a number of incidents that were handled with unparalleled professionalism, resulting in resolutions to situations that could have easily gone very bad. Thank you all for all of your efforts. More importantly, I'd like to thank your families. I want to thank them for allowing them to leave, for allowing you to leave their homes, your homes, so that you can come out and protect ours. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Ms. Kisty. Thank you. Captain Laskowitz will make a presentation. <clears throat> no, it's better, if, it's better for the recording, thank you. Good evening, thank you all. My name is Captain Steve Laskowitz of the Jackson Police Department. I'm honored on behalf of Chief Kunz to be here tonight to introduce our three newest hires to the agency. Before I get started, I'd also like to thank the uh, Town Council and the Mayor for their commitment to growing the department to fit the growing town's needs and for the calls for service that we deal with. Thank you very much for your support. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce each uh, new officer. I'll give a very brief bio and then the town clerk will come down to do the uh, swearing in and the appointment. First up will be police officer Zachary Schwartz. Please come forward. <clears throat> officer Schwartz, badge number 323. He'll be appointed as a full-time police officer with the agency. He's a lifelong Jackson Township resident and he graduated from Jackson Liberty High School. He's got an associate's degree in criminal justice from Ocean County College, and he also has a bachelor's in criminal justice from John Jay College. He attended the Ocean County Police Academy, and most recently he was working as a class two special law enforcement officer with Seaside Heights. He will be a uh, full-time police officer. He will be attending a uh, shortened version of the academy to get his full-time certificate. Police officer, Zachary Shorts. I'd also like to present him with his badge, badge 323. There you go, sir. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up will be Tyler Melnick. Officer 
Officer Melnick is being hired as a class two special police officer. He is a lifelong resident of Jackson Township also and graduates from Jackson Liberty High School. He's got a bachelor's in criminal justice from Stockton University and he attended the Monmouth County Police Academy class two. He uh, worked for as a class one special police officer with the Asbury Park Police Department and most recently as a class two officer with the Asbury Park Police Department. He will be doing in-service training and then he will be coming on as a class two special police officer with us. Congratulations. And lastly, I'd like to call up police officer David DeJesus, badge number 064. Officer DeJesus is a lifelong Jackson Township resident. He graduated from Jackson Memorial High School, and he's currently attending Keene University, working towards his bachelor's in criminal justice. He attended the Ocean County Police Academy and worked as a class two special law enforcement officer with the Point Pleasant Police Department, and then most recently with the Lambertville Police Department. He will be attending in-service training, and then he will be coming on as a special class two police officer. Officer DeJesus, congratulations. <laughs> now the court clerk will call each officer up to take the oath of office. Do you have anybody who's going to be coming up with you? Officer Schwartz. <laughs> I, Zachary Schwartz. I, Zachary Schwartz. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially and justly perform. Impartially and justly perform. The duties of police officer. The duties of police officer. According to the best of my ability, so help me God according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Police Officer Tyler Melnick. I, Tyler Melnick. I, Tyler Melnick. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially and justly perform. Impartially and justly perform. The duties of special police officer class two. The duties of special police officer class two. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. According to the best of my abilities, so help me God. Police Officer David DeJesus. I, David DeJesus. I, David DeJesus. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform. That I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform. The duties of Special Police Officer Class 2. The duties of a special police officer, class two. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. Thank you. Congratulations. Again, thank you very much to the township and to the council and mayor for their support of the police department and for continuing to grow the agency so we can serve the town. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Congratulations. Do red tie. Please Come sign. Just sign it here. It doesn't matter. It does matter, but I know you're doing it. I filled out the interest. Thank you very much. No, I didn't very good. <laughs> That's not mine. That's yours. Because I can't take mama for Thank you very much. Congratulations, guys. Good luck to you. Thank you. Clear? Okay. <laughs> Continuing on, we have two proclamations this evening. Um, Mayor Rena. Uh, I believe uh, Council President uh, Kern has uh, the library one. He can make whoever he'd like to read it. I have delegated said responsibility to Councilman Borelli. Okay. Just let him read right from there. There you go. Stand up for read right from there. Make sure your mic's on. It is. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of uh, the Township of Jackson, proclamation for the libraries. Whereas libraries of all types are at the heart of their cities, towns, schools, and campuses serving their communities. And whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that foster a sense of belonging and community. And whereas today's libraries and their services extend far beyond the four walls of the building and everyone is welcome to use their resources. And whereas for people lacking broadband at home, libraries provide access to computers and Wi-Fi, even checking out internet hotspots and laptops. And whereas libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equity about access for all. And whereas libraries offer opportunities for everyone to explore new worlds and become their best selves through access to technology, multimedia content, and educational programs. And whereas, in times of crisis, libraries, librarians, and library workers play an invaluable role in supporting their communities both in person and virtually. And whereas, to adapt to our changing world, libraries are expanding their resources and continuing to meet the needs of their patrons. And whereas, libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting the free exchange of information and ideas for all. And whereas libraries have long served as trusted and treasured institutions for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. And whereas libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved that on behalf of Mayor Michael Reyna of the Township of Jackson, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, do hereby proclaim April 4th to 10th, 2021 as National Library Week in the Township of Jackson and strongly encourage all vis uh, residents to visit their library online to access resources and services. Because of you, libraries transform lives and communities. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the next proclamation uh, stands as written. Whereas a quality education is one of the significant foundations for continuing success of our state, our country, and our society at large. And in the Township of Jackson, we strive for the betterment of all our citizens to an increased focus on education and sharing. And whereas through providing the possibility of an excellent education for all, especially our children, which with which to gain knowledge through rigorous study, we can create hope for a brighter, kinder, and more united and prosperous future in the lives of so many. And whereas one of the leading global advocates for the advancement of education, the Lubavitcher Rabbi, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, stressed the importance of moral and ethical education as the bedrock of humanity. 
and the hallmark of a healthy society, and strongly urge that education be reinforced by the inculcation of strong moral values. And whereas, in recognition of the Rebbe's outstanding and lasting contributions toward improvements in world education, morality, and acts of charity, he was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal and the United States Congress has established his birth date as a national day to raise awareness and strengthen the education of our children. And whereas, for more than 40 years, the President of the United States has recognized and honored the Rebbe's vision each year on that day by proclaiming it Education and Sharing Day USA. And whereas, we, present, we presently battle a global pandemic which has disrupted traditional models of education across our nation. While concurrently motivating the focus on a stronger core values we wish to impart to children and adults beyond academic achievement. And whereas, we can nurture the unity and diversity of people through encouraging increased acts of goodness and kindness, imbued with awareness that even a single positive act of an individual can make a major impact in this world. And whereas, now therefore, I, Michael Rena, Mayor of the Jackson Township, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, proclaimed March 24th, 2021 as Education and Sharing Day in the Township of Jackson and call upon government officials, educators, volunteers, and citizens to reach out to those within your communities and to work to create a better, brighter, and more hopeful future for all. Signed by myself, Councilman Andrew Kern, Martin Fleming, Alex Sawicki, Steve Chisholm Jr., and Nino Borelli, dated March 23rd, 2021. Council President. Thank you. Rabbi Shmuel is here. I'd like to present the two. Oh, absolutely. I'd like to express my uh, thanks to the mayor and to the council president and to the entire council for this proclamation that has become a tradition, I think, uh, four, three or four years that we've been doing this. And what we are commemorating today is, like we just heard in the text of the proclamation, that education is something that, as we've seen especially this year, is something that is in the purview and in the experience of every single person. And so, as educators, we're not only the teachers are educators, this year we've seen that parents are edu educators, and every one of us are educators in our circle, in our surroundings, and the people around us. And so the message that the Rebbe promoted, and that is commemorated on this day, is to view ourselves, every single one of us, as educators, as people that have ability to influence our surroundings, people around us, our families, our friends, our relatives, our neighborhoods, our towns, and ultimately the entire world. So thank you very much. I'd like to present a uh, book to the mayor, if that's okay. Um, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. All set. We now have a, pres a presentation for, with the Jackson Board of Education. Please come forward. Is that here? You may. That's, that's working unless you want a portable mic. It's fine. Nope, this is fine. Can you all hear me? Okay. okay. Yes. I'm Nicole Pomelli, the superintendent of Jackson Schools. Thank you for having us this evening. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to share this wonderful um, grant award that we've been provided. And a lot of thanks belongs to our council itself and Mr. Kern for making us aware of this 
um, opportunity in the summer of this wonderful grant that's going to allow us to replace a very old garbage truck that if you had um, noticed in multiple years of presentations of our budget that was rusting away and needed great replacement. And so I'm going to actually introduce Mr. John Blair, who took the lead in this grant opportunity for us, along with Mr. Ostroff, our Director of Facilities and Ground, and our Business Administrator, Ms. Richardson. Um, but Mr. Blair um, really did chair the forefront of this wonderful opportunity for us. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Blair to explain how this all worked, and thank you, Mr. Kern, uh, Councilman Kern, for letting us know about this opportunity uh, in August. And we were able to jump on it and luckily got an award. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to take this off if I'm gonna speak. Um, I'm basically the detail guy, you know. Um, so there's three things I wanna talk about. The first thing is the grant itself. Like where did it come from, you know. Like a few years ago, Volkswagen, got in trouble for misreporting their emissions on their diesel vehicles. I don't know if you remember that, it was all over the news. And as a result of that, the state of New Jersey received about $37 million. And so what the state decided to do is, all right, we're, we're going to eliminate as many diesel run vehicles off the road as possible. And that's the whole purpose of this grant. Um, when Councilman Kern first, uh, let us know about it, that was last July actually, and the deadline was some, sometime at the end of the month, and we put in a, a grant for two electric powered garbage trucks to replace our current diesel um, powered garbage trucks. One of which was from, is from 1996. So you can imagine how much, how much pollution is being created by by this truck, and the other one was from 2006. Um, both of these trucks will eliminate about 25 tons of electric, um, of CO2, of greenhouse gases, I should say, each year. So, and also, in terms of a cost savings, it costs us about, in diesel, about $10,500 per year for fuel to run these vehicles each. Now, afterwards, they're going to be charged by electricity, did a little bit of math, and that cost will now only be about $500 worth of electricity to run these trucks. So every year these trucks are on the road, that's a $10,000 cost avoidance. Each of these trucks go about 120 miles per charge. We'll be charging them uh, over in the bus lot at Liberty. So if you want to take a ride over there and check it out, I mean, it's going to take a while. They still have to build the trucks. But um, it would be very interesting. Um, also, now, I also wanted to mention that the amount of the grant was for a little over $1.1 million. So that's significant cost savings to the district and the charging stations are also included in that grant. Um, and I, I'm, I think that this, this grant is a perfect com complement to what we've been doing in the school district over the past four years. About four years ago, we decided to start an energy conservation program. Since then, we've won several mini grants for 2,000, 10,000, but this one is the biggest so far. Also, we've won several awards through Sustainable Jersey for Schools. Every year, we get um, awarded down in Atlantic City. This is going on four years in a row now. All of our schools are certified with Sustainable Jersey for Schools. Three of them are actually silver certified, of which there are only 19 schools in the state of New Jersey that are silver certified, and three of them are here in Jackson. One's right next door. And speaking of the one next door, at Switlick, they have recently been nominated to be a Green Ribbon School, which is a national recognition. That one of two schools in the state of New Jersey that will be recognized this year as a national Green Ribbon School through the Department of Education. And you guys are the first to hear that in public, so. Um, I think also 
This is also a great combination to what we've been doing. Our energy program has chopped about $2.4 million over the past four years off the budget. That's just reducing from the energy budget itself. And also, we're currently going through what's known as an ESIP, an Energy Savings Improvement Program, which is basically a large construction project which, is, which creates a net zero cost to the taxpayer because all of the upgrades are energy efficient upgrades. So it creates a net zero cost to the taxpayer and it's a $26 million project that essentially doesn't cost the taxpayer anything. So because of all of the things that we've been doing, there is no way we could have gotten this grant. They would never have given a, us a grant this large for if, if we weren't doing anything beforehand. Because many of our neighbors applied for different types of vehicles and none of them received anything. So I want to thank everyone for your time and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. May I have your yes. excuse me? May yeah. I have your name for the record? Oh, my name is John Blair. John. John Blair. Blair. Okay, thank yes. you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Great job. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay. We'll now commence with uh, opening comments from the Township Council, Councilman Borelli. Uh, thank you, Clerk Kisty. Good to see some more people out uh, today. Thank you. Uh, everyone for their presentations. Um, it's always nice to see the JTPT that was here before uh, at the council meetings and uh, thank them for their service. And uh, that's great news from our education officials tonight regarding saving taxpayer money. That's always, you know, the goals of uh, school districts and all of us here on the governing body. Um, right, first, I want to start off by saying, and I've been reading, you know, about the new recreational marijuana law, and I'm very concerned about it. Um, and I think it's a good talk, topic to talk about, especially that some of our school officials are here from our town. And I think these laws are going to undoubtedly impact the quality of life in Jackson and make the jobs of our town officers, many of whom who are here tonight, much harder. Particularly the provision of it, where that a police search of a child for possible possession of the substance could result in a third degree crime charge and officers are prohibited from notifying the parents. Oh, but it's on the name of social justice. That's malarkey. And the state is using the kids in the middle of all of this. They will stop at nothing. It is alarming, appalling, and sickening. Slowly we have seen the erosion of parental rights in New Jersey. New Jersey has become the hub of harmful leftist experimentation and indoctrination. And didn't the legislature read the recreational marijuana bill they so highly coveted when they passed this law or the governor when he signed it? We've heard that one before, haven't we? To the J JTPD, please let us know. Um, wish I could tell them I could have told them when they were here. <laughs> um, but this is, uh, I know, getting right into the public comments. So we want to let them know that uh, we're here to help them out on the council to combat the new recreational marijuana law so we can maintain a good quality of life in Jackson, which is always our focus, and protect, protect especially our innocent kids from Trenton Democrats lunacy and make the police officers already tough jobs easier. Also, there's some helpful links about the COVID-19 vaccine on the Jackson Township website, including Ocean County Senior Services, which has a full forest volunteer group who is assisting seniors if they would like to register for the COVID vaccine. Their phone number is 732-929-2091. According to the Asbury Park Press, the Right Aid on New Prospect Road in our town is offering the vaccine. In closing, thank you to our fellow residents, many of whom submitted in complaints about their Altice Optimum Service. The state hearing on this issue was on March 16th. Hopefully the issues will be fixed and fast. Thank, thank you, take care, and have a good evening and a safe ride home. Thank you. Councilman Chisholm. Good evening, thank you. Um, just like to congratulate our um, grant recipients there with the Board of Education, that's great. Congratulations on a, a big uh, grant that's way 
uh, good for all of us here. That's uh, exciting news. I would like to uh, congratulate also all of the police officers today for their promotions, and I look forward to seeing them out there serving our community for many years to come, and I wish them a long and healthy career. And also, in light of it being uh, National Library Week, I know once we are not kids anymore, a lot of people don't read, and I certainly would encourage you to go back and uh, turn off the screen for once, pick up a book, and uh, instill in your children a lifelong habit of reading. It is very beneficial to you, and uh, I would highly encourage it. With that, I uh, just thank everybody for coming out tonight, those of you watching at home, and uh, just have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Sawicki. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, two of my favorite things about this town were highlighted tonight. Uh, first, our, our police department, was, which as uh, the council president said, is second to none in this state. Uh, they, uh, they're consistently keeping us ranked among the safest uh, towns in the state uh, with the lowest, uh, among the lowest percentage of hate crimes. Uh, like the three police officers that were sworn in tonight, uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Jackson. Uh, I've had the luck and honor of knowing uh, several of our, our current police officers. I, I went to school with them. I graduated with them. And uh, I can tell you, uh, every, everyone that I know on that force, their heart is in this town. And uh, it shows every time they, they, uh, they step out and, and come out and protect us. Um, also, like the, uh, the three officers that were sworn in tonight, uh, I'm also a graduate of uh, Jackson School Systems, uh, which is uh, my second favorite thing to talk about. Uh, I'm the son of a, a Jackson School teacher, and uh, uh, really have had the uh, the luck again of going through our school system. Uh, you see what it produces in in uh, just the three officers we had tonight, and uh, uh, hopefully you've you've heard us from the dais more than once. Uh, uh, compliment our teachers. Uh, I've, I've also complimented the town, which I, I think is uh, very much behind the teachers within this town, unlike other towns. Uh, within the state where uh, I've just seen some unbelievable comments and, and things like protests against the teachers uh, keeping the, skid, the kids out of school, which of course has nothing, you know, they have nothing to do with it. Uh, so uh, my thanks to the Board of Ed uh, and uh, everything that you guys do. I know it's been a heck of a year. I, I can't even imagine. Uh, I, I'm also married to a teacher, so uh, uh, I, I, I can't imagine a little bit. Uh, but uh, thank you for everything you do. Thank you th uh, to the teachers uh, and the district. And uh, it's very much appreciated by everybody up here. Uh, for everybody that did come out tonight, everybody that's watching at home, thank you and uh, get home safe. Thank you. Thank you. Council Vice President Fleming. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go off on a little bit different tangent. Everybody knows we're all proud of our schools. Um, I'd like to welcome our new police officers. And we're definitely proud of our police department. Um, we're also proud of the rest of our fire services and our EMS services. Um, our fire departments, all four of them, went over to Lakewood about a week or so ago and helped with uh, the fires over there. Our companies handled four structure fires in Lakewood alone, as well as the brush fire. At the same time, our companies with a split squad were doing the same thing in town. They had a structure fire and eight other calls, always accompanied by our EMS. So we have a lot to be proud of in this town. And I think we should be, and we should tell them so every once in a while. Thank you. Have a safe uh, ride home, guys. Thank you. Council President Kern. Thank you. Um, just uh, one last thing. Uh, congratulations again to the police officers. Thank you to the Board of Education for coming out tonight and telling all the residents uh, about this wonderful grant. But as we've seen tonight in, the, in your presentation, a, a simple application can provide a tremendous upgrade in, for you equipment. It could be for supplies. It could be for program funding. $1.1 million is not bad for a few dozen hours worth of work, worth of effort. Uh, tonight, our council is asking the administration to prepare, and advertise, prepare, advertise, and receive bids for grant writing services so that we have dedicated um, uh, services searching out and applying for grants that are out there. Um, the return on investment for these services to the taxpayers is amazing. 
and has already been proven by, been proven by other towns. Uh, it is time that Jackson focuses on these opportunities that will help all of our residents. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Mayor, sorry. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'll be, I'll be quick. Uh, I echo uh, the comments of, of the council tonight and who they're acknowledging. And uh, just to add to that, when, when you say thanks, uh, our township workers as a whole really do a phenomenal job especially handling this, you know, the pandemic and everything goes with it. But tonight, uh, on a more somber note, uh, I'd like everyone to know that Jackson Township uh, extends their, uh, their sympathies, and we grieve the losses in Boulder uh, that seems to be uh, just, just another senseless tragedy. But we want, we want our uh, friends in Boulder to know that we're with them, and uh, our thoughts and prayers will be with them always. What the thing I've been saying in 13 years sitting up here to the residents, whether you're sitting in the seats or whether you're home on Zoom, you need to become involved. You need, you need to get more involved in the township and educate yourselves on the things that are available, not only to you, your families, whether it's your parents or your children, your grandchildren. There's a lot out there to be learned. Uh, as we see in national events, as well as what's going on in this wonderful state of ours that we're still in lockdown, it's the longest two weeks of my life, uh, that the more you know, as, as they say in school, knowledge is power. Well, we're going to need that power in the voting booth again this year. So get up to speed as much as you can. Please immerse yourself into whatever areas that you have to learn about. We will help you. Uh, the township website is chock full of knowledge information and anything else you need. Council's always available. My administration's always there. The phones are always on, even after hours, whether it's a pothole, leaves, whatever, you know how to get a hold of us. So please, everyone, get involved. See what's going on, not only in your town, but outside, outside the four walls, because it's getting, it's getting a little scary out there. And uh, to all who did come out tonight, thank you very much. Uh, we, appreciate, uh, we appreciate seeing you. Uh, have a good night. Be safe. And uh, See you next go around. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve executive session meeting minutes of March 9th, 2021? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, we have to take a vote. Oh, it's a roll? Yes, okay, roll please. Call, please. <laughs> Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. Thank you. There are no ordinances for second reading this evening, but tonight we have two ordinances for first reading. First one is Ordinance 05-21, an ordinance of the Township of Jackson, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 304-38 of the Jackson Township Code, entitled Recreation Fees. Motion to approve Ordinance 05-21 on first reading. Advertise the notice of approval and public hearing to be held on April 13th, 2021. So moved. Second. First uh, motion is second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. Ordinance 6 21 is an ordinance of the Township of Jackson, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey authorizing the execution of an easement agreement with Jersey Central Power and Light for the Township's HESP <laughs> Solar Legler Landfill Project. Motion to approve Ordinance 6-21 on first reading, advertise the notice of approval, and public hearing to be held on April 13, 2021. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. Thank you. Does Council have any discussion on any resolutions at this time? Seeing none, we'll call it. Okay. We will now have public comment on resolutions only. If you wish to speak on resolutions, please come to the microphone. Seeing no one come forward, move to close public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving to resolutions, 141R-21, authorized budget transfer number five. 
So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. 142 R 21, authorized emergency temporary appropriation number two. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. 143 R 21 is a resolution urging the immediate repeal of Senate Bill number 3454, Public Law 2021, Chapter 25. So Enthusiastically, moved. second, yes. Uh, who was first? Oh. Okay. Oh, Roll call, please. Okay. Councilman Borelli. Most definitely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Chisholm. Yes. Councilman Sawicki. Absolutely, yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council President Kern. Although we shouldn't even need this, yes. Okay. 144 R 21, establish fees for summer basketball and wrestling camps for the Jackson Township Recreation Department. So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Chisholm. Yes. Councilman Sawicki. Yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council President Kern. Yes. 145 R-21, authorized renewal of a contract agreement between the Township of Jackson and Firefighter Fire Protection Services for the second and final additional year, commencing January 28, 2021, through January 27, 2022, in the amount of $11,736.28. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Chisholm. Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. 146 R 21, authorize as built closeout change order number one to the contract between the Township of Jackson and MECO Incorporated for the project known as 2019 Pavement Improvements, whereby decreasing the contract amount by $112,076.85, resulting in an adjusted contract price in the amount of $1,432,000. $436.17. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. 147 R-21, authorize as built, close out change order number three to the contract between the Township of Jackson and the P&A Construction for the project known as 2020 Roadway Improvement Program, whereby decreasing the contract amount by $28,384.81, resulting in an adjusted contract price in the amount of $809,868.65. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Swicky? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. 148 R 21, authorize as built close out change order number one to the contract between the Township of Jackson and Captain Construction for the project known as 2019 Roadway Drainage Improvements, whereby decreasing the contract amount by $16,567.20, resulting in an adjusted contract price in the amount of $178,331.80. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Chisholm. Yes. Councilman Sawicki. Yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council President Kern. Yes. 149 R-21, authorized professional engineering services with T&M Associates for fiscal year 2021 roadway improvement program, design, construction, administration, and inspection services in an amount not to exceed $191,875. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. 150 R 21, authorized professional engineering services with TM Associates for Jackson Township Capital Road Program Asset Management, roadway rating reporting services in an amount not to exceed $73,775. 
So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. May I have a motion for Sorry. bills and claims? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes, on every item except abstaining on FOU 04, NJS 04, and NJS 14. Thank you. Councilman Chisholm? Yes, but abstain from BRI 18, EDW 04, JER 29, JER 41, TM 01, and TM 02. Okay. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? I'd like to pay them all. Okay. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> Council President Kern. Well, this thing from uh, vendor as you are zero nine. Yes to the rest. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, which is one vote for all of these resolutions. One fifty one R dash twenty one approve approved Township Council meeting minutes of March 9th, twenty twenty one. One fifty two R dash twenty one approved Treasurer's report for February twenty twenty one. 153R-21, authorize the preparation, advertisement, and acceptance of bids for grant writing services for the Township of Jackson. 154R-21, authorize DAV exemption for Block 4302, Lot 21. 155R-21, approve tax overpayment refunds. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Sawicki? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council President Kern? Yes. We've come to the public comment on any topic portion. If you wish to speak to council, please come to the microphone now. Seeing no one come forward, move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to close. So moved. 